Hello and welcome to day three of Women's Health Week. My name is Shelley Ware and I'm an ambassador for Women's Health Week. Today's theme is all about inside story that is the health of your bladder, gut and bowel. And joining me is Jean Hale's naturopath, Sandra Villela, and dietitian and award-winning author, Karen Inge. Now, Karen, let's start with you. Thank you both for joining us today. It's great to have you both here. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Can you tell us about what the gut microbiome is and why it is so important to our overall health? Well, thanks, Shelley, and um, hello to everyone. Well, it's interesting because certainly the gut microbiota or, or gut microbiome has really become uh, you know, of great interest to everyone, and we think about it in general terms of digestive health. But the gut microbiota is actually a collection of bacteria, viruses, and fungi that live in our gastrointestinal tract and play a vital role in our overall health and well-being. And you'll hear a lot of these terms used uh, interchangeably, uh, but there is a difference. And the gut microbiota particularly helps with digestion, metabolism, immune function. In fact, 70% of our immune cells actually live in our digestive system. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so there's, it, it's very, very important uh, uh, because we also know that there's a, a connection between uh, the gut and, and brain function. So the microbiome um, also includes the genes of the microbes. And um, we really think about the gut microbiome as an organ in terms of itself. So it's vitally important to our overall health and well-being. Oh, wow. I didn't know that it was um, connected to the brain function. That's good to know. Sandra, can you please explain the difference between good bacteria and bad bacteria? Yes, Shelley. So the good bacteria or the beneficial bacteria do all the good jobs that Karen was talking about. So they're the ones that help with our digestion, our immune function, our helps with that brain and, and gut access sort of function. And then the bad, there's three ways to think about the bad. There's the bad, like, you know, if you ate something dodgy like bad chicken and then you got a bad bug and you got gastro or you might get food poisoning, then there's the bad, like, the bacteria in the wrong place. So, for example, E. coli lives in our gut, but if it gets in our urinary tract, then it causes a urinary tract infection. And then there's the not so good. So in our, in our bacteria sort of environment in the gut, there are some that are kept under control by the good ones. And sometimes they can misbehave or not be so good. So these are the bad ones if they're not kept under control, if the balance is put out of whack and then they might proliferate. They're a bit opportunistic, if you like, and then they can behave and cause problems. Ah, there you go. Karen, what are the um, signs of poor gut health? Well, the obvious signs of poor gut health, and I think we've all experienced them at some times in our lives, are sort of problems with our bowels. So you can either be constipated or you can have diarrhoea. You can have excessive flatulence. I mean, some flatulence is, is normal. Uh, you can feel quite bloated. So um, women often f experience irritable bowel syndrome, and that's really that can be a sign of poor gut health, uh, as well as obviously other um, you know, it's psychological issues that can affect that. Uh, you can feel, um, well, it's a psychological issue. You can feel very anxious, really quite depressed, very moody, uh, and just not yourself. You can feel incredibly tired. That's another common sign of a poor, poor gut health. Um, and you can also experience uh, food intolerances as well. Um, basically, you're just not feeling great. And I think when your gut is working and functioning really well, uh, you feel more vital, have a lot of vitality, and you feel that sense of, of well-being. So it's exactly the opposite when your gut is not um, occurring, not functioning quite well. And the, the other thing that we're really beginning to understand a little bit more about is how important the gut is for our immune system. So if you are having problems with immune function, uh, and some people are at the moment, uh, mm. then it can often relate back to uh, poor gut health. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Sandra, how important is fibre for gut health? So fibre is very important. Not only is it the substance that helps to push everything along, a bit like a brush, and then moves along everything so to reduce our exposure to toxins, but it really is one of the most important fuel sources for these good bacteria that we talk about. And there are all different types of fibre. 
insoluble, soluble, resistant starch, and all of them do have a role in feeding these good bacteria. And, and a lot of the time we talk about this resistant starch being very important. And it's res called resistant starch because it, it, it's resistant to digestion higher up in the, in the um, digestive tract and reaches the bowel, the, the large bowel, where it feeds these good bacteria. It's a fuel source for these bacteria and helps to produce these really beneficial, what we call small, ch small chain fatty acids. And they tend that this, these particular small chain fatty acids really help to, with the function of these gut cells as well that line our gut and help with the integrity and the functioning of it. So it's pretty important. And what we do know, it's really important to have a diversity of different fibre sources as well. Oh, good to know. Now, Sandra, what does it mean to eat the rainbow and, and why should we? Yes, well, we always say eat the colours of the rainbow so we get a variety of, you know, fruit and vegetables and particularly the different colours have different functions. But when it comes to the gut, I want to focus particularly on one side of the rainbow where there's the red, blues type of thing because these ones, particularly, you know, think red, blue, purple, uh, are really high in and a particular phytochemical called um, polyphenols and they are a fantastic source of fuel for these gut bacteria tend to produce a lot of the anti-inflammatory actions so think purple like like eggplant think blue and black like berries and think red so if you've got a choice between you know, red cabbage and green cabbage go red cabbage for example yeah oh, fantastic I like that that's got some good information there for everyone now Karen what are the top foods to nourish your gut microbiome well I I Totally agree with Sandra and um, her rationale and, and how important it is to eat the right rainbow and um, certainly focus on all the different types of fibre and polyphenols in foods. So if we look think about the foods, I mean, it's important also to get some probiotic foods into your into your system. And um, the obvious one is, is a yogurt that has um, different probiotics added to it. So the acidophilus, bifidus, KCI, and there are a number of, of very of different um, strains of those types of bacteria. And there's been an increase in popularity of foods like kimchi, uh, the kombucha, uh, uh, sourdough breads, uh, sauerkraut, kefir, all of these um, fermented foods, which, um, you know, there's a lot of research out on, and some of the research is mixed, but it really causes no harm for the majority of people to increase these sorts of uh, probiotic foods into the diet. And as Sandra says, it's terribly important to have the prebiotics. And when we look at, uh, to help fuel the growth and, and the flour and to help these uh, good bacteria flourish. And when we're looking at um, prebiotic uh, fibres and foods, uh, obviously mainly from plant foods. And, and it is so important to get a variety and diversity in that. So just obviously some of the fruits would be uh, apricots, dates, grapefruit, nectarines, I mean, pomegranates, prunes, uh, watermelon, you know, you can go right through um, and, and all of them are, are very beneficial. And, and with vegetables, particularly the fibrous ones like artichokes and asparagus, beetroot, Brussels sprouts, anything in the brassica family, cauliflower, broccoli, I mean, leeks, garlic, uh, and with grains and nuts, they're also really vitally important and, and all of them are, are beneficial. And, um, and then, of course, the legumes and lentils, which are really very important as well. And some teas, like even um, chai tea, uh, dandelion tea, fennel uh, tea, all of these teas are also very good. And um, but so... In other words, what am I saying? I think the research is suggesting that if you eat 30 different plant foods a week, you are doing your best to actually provide an array of all of the prebiotic fibres and, um, and also getting these polyphenols. So try and increase your uh, dietary fibre up to over 30 grams a day. But for um, every increase, the more the, the merrier really in terms of that. So the obvious thing is increase plant foods, eat more plant foods. But I think the, num the magic number is at the moment 30 or 30 different ones a week to get you the diversity that you need. Now, it's always good to know a number that it gives you something to aim for because it's a big change I would say for a lot of people. But you know, gradually um, adding that in would be so beneficial to them, wouldn't it? 
Well, it is. And I think people really want to know about how to do that. And I think when you think of stir fries, for example, you think of fruit salads and salads, and you think of having a mixed grain porridge in the morning, uh, rather than just having, you know, relying on wheat, for example, or just having, you know, potatoes all the time, even though uh, cooked cooled potatoes are very high in resistant starch. So even eating leftovers like leftover pasta, mm. leftover rice that you cool and then you reheat increases the resistant starch, which does uh, create this right environment that Sandra was talking about, about the butyrates, which actually are quite protective against bowel cancer as well as being very important for um, your overall uh, gut health. So, you know, there's it's not that hard. It's just really thinking about it and um and trying to get that color and and i say color to get the movement <laughs> I suppose, I like color that. and movement <laughs> i like that i like that a lot now sandra what is the single most important thing for each person watching today to know about my gut mode okay i just want to also agree absolutely with karen it really does show that diversity of food tends to have the greatest impact on the diversity of our bowel bacteria and that diversity of our bowel bacteria seems to be important. So the single most important thing is really focus on whole food and that's how you're going to get the diversity. So think about bread, fruit, veg, fruit and vegetables, seeds, nuts, grains, legumes. If you go to the Gene House Kitchen, we have a little section called Gut Friendly Food and each recipe has been chosen because the ingredients in it are predominantly whole food and feed and nourish these gut microbiota. And I particularly want to draw the attention to the red rice and the zuki bean salad because every ingredient has been chosen because it's either prebiotic or high in polyphenols or resistant starch and it exemplifies exactly what mm -hmm. we're going to talk about. That would be my message, thanks. And it's delicious. It's delicious. And particularly you can have it cold the next day. So you've got cold, you know, bright starchy vegetables and cold red rice or you could use black rice as well and it's yum very yum oh good to hear now karen do you have anything that you would like to add oh the only thing i would really like to to add to all of this is if you are during these times feeling anxious you're feeling depressed you're not coping well with the stress i think it's really important to consider your diet because um, you know, and, and exercise, of course, but the, the gut brain connection is a fairly new understanding in our world, in our nutrition and science world. And so just concentrate a little bit about nourishing yourself and, um, and chewing well and, and eating slowly and trying to relax, but understand that there is an enormous connection between how you're feeling psychologically and what you're eating and what impact that's having on your gut. So stay well, that's all I say, and eat well. Absolutely. Beautiful. Thank you both so much for joining us today. So thank you, um, Sandra and Karen, at sharing your wisdom. And I think everybody would have um, taken something really valuable about what you've shared with us today. So thank you. And I would also like to invite the viewers to join us tomorrow for day four of Women's Health Week, when I will be talking to psychologist and former Olympian Caroline Anderson about mental health, in particular, how to cope with change and learning how to let go. Thank you both and take care. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.